This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by our friends at IT Pro TV, now called ACI Learning. Together, ACI Learning and IT Pro entertain and train your team to keep your business performing at its best. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit. Twit listeners who complete the form can receive as much as 65% off an IT Pro enterprise solution plan. You'll get the proper quote based on the size of your team. So I think it fits well with this. We mentioned earlier uh, LaTeX, and I bet a lot of people don't know what that is or even how it's spelled. Can, can you give us the, the quick answer to what LaTeX is and why you need it? Sure, yeah. So LaTeX is a text formatting language. It's based off of Tech, T-E-X, um, which was uh, created by Donald Knuth uh, to format text. And it was expanded into LaTeX, L-A-T-E-X, which a lot of people say LaTeX, which is fine. Um, like with everything else in open source, in FOSS, uh, there, there's like five different pronunciations. And you can get in great holy wars about which one's right. Uh, so, but if you want to be fancy, you can say LaTeX, uh, which is my understanding is how it's officially pronounced. But in any case, uh, it's spelled L-A-T-E-X. However, it is formatted uppercase l uh, lowercase a, uppercase T, lowercase e, uppercase X. And in LaTeX, because it's a text formatting language, to make it fancy, they even have a tag for this that that um, makes superscript and subscript forms of some of these letters in the word, uh, just to show off that it's a text formatting language. Anyway, why you need to do this is you need some way to, for example, make things italic, or you need some ways to make the headers of a chapter bigger a first level header bigger than the second level header, that sort of thing. Um, while you could certainly cop, you know, select text and increase the font or decrease the font or bold or not bold, that's cumbersome. And so what LaTeX allows you to do is just like HTML does for a, a website, is it allows you to say, this is a header, this is a chapter, um, this, is the, this is a paragraph, uh, and this paragraph shouldn't be indented or just with very fairly minimal markup. Uh, and it allows you to say what this text is. This is a code block. And by saying what it is in a separate file, and there's all these great templates out there for this. It makes it very fast to say for LaTeX to then go through and compile your document and, and take all of your hints about what something is and ap apply all of the formatting that's necessary uh, to that, knowing that it's a header or knowing it's a code block or whatever. It also does great things like automatically um, adds page numbers to everything in the right place. It automatically reads all of the headers and generates a um, table of contents for you. Uh, you can even tag certain elements and say that I want this to be in the index. This particular section should be in the index under this name. And it will automatically compile and build um, indices for you in the back of your book. Uh, all of this stuff, it dramatically increases the speed at which you can format text. If you're, once you climb the learning curve, like anything like this. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's, it's incredibly powerful. It's it's used a lot in academia. Uh, it's used less outside of that, but it's used it's used by a lot of people. I mean, I formatted my resume in LaTeX after I climbed a learning curve. I found this really great template for resumes uh, that that I I formatted. And it's very because it's all based in text. If you can type relatively quickly, it's it's just incredibly powerful and very fast compared to having to get your hands off of Home Row and go, go grab a mouse and select text. Yep. You spoke earlier about doing some of your formatting in, in markup. Is there a tool to convert markup to, to LaTeX? I'm sure there is, uh, <laughs> but in practice, I tend to not, I haven't done that. So uh, it, it's possible that it's because there's, there's just more, once you get to the formatting phase, the, the markdown that I use is so lightweight and it's just, and it's fairly minimal. It's just like, this is a header, et cetera, that I found it's, it's, because I need to, in the formatting part of the process, I'm also doing another round of editing, sort of, because I have to read every word that I've written so I can see how I need to format, if there's something I need to format or add an index for or whatever. And so I'm, I'm already kind of reading through the text anyway, so changing two hash signs into a, a LaTeX slash section or, you know, subsection uh, using that formatting is not a huge deal at that point. So yeah, there are tools. That, I mean, there's tools that can convert back and forth between LaTeX and all of the other markup in uh, languages you can think of. Uh, I I just personally don't tend to use it. I I go through sort of when I'm in that frame of mind and do it manually. 
Sure. And I've got to ask you, when you do, do you do versioning on your books as you're writing them? And really the question here is, do you use Git in writing your books? <laughs> I didn't used to, um, but more recently my projects, because I could essentially, um, <laughs> I have. Uh, I haven't yet found, I haven't had the trouble case that you would think you would really need this for, which is, I deleted something or made a mistake or I need to go back to a previous revision. Mm -hmm. For the most part, uh, any mistakes or problems or something that you just sort of roll ahead with, you don't, I haven't, I haven't yet needed to roll back on something. How's that? Uh, but I like the, the safety net, I suppose, of having that. And so I've started, I've started trying to do that. So for example, how to write a tech book, it's, it has its own little Git repository locally on my machine. Um, and it's all in every time I would complete a chapter, I would, you know, commit a new commit with that chapter in it. So I had these milestones. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's perfectly possible that in the future, in particular, I could see this if you, if you're a, if you were someone who made massive edits to cut material, um, at some part, mm -hmm. some point later in the process, and then found that you needed some of that material back, this could be incredibly useful to do it that way. 